honor to hear from Dagma and from Sumit and Utsav, and really excited about telling you about the work we're doing at Karya and painting a picture, hopefully, of the incredible philanthropic ecosystem we have in the country today. So my name is Manu. Uh, I grew up, like I said, in a basti in Delhi. And growing up, I spent a lot of time dancing to Bollywood music and coding in the community computer lab. Through the series of scholarships, I found myself at Stanford becoming the first person from my community to go to a college in the US on complete scholarship. But my story is unfortunately not normal. India has 230 million poor people, more than any other country in the world. And for most of them, there is no path out of poverty. Even today, we are responsible for more than one in three people who happen to be poor globally. It takes an average low-income Indian seven generations of labor to reach $1,500 in savings. I'll say that again. It takes an average poor person in India seven generations of labor, over 200 years, just to afford the laptop and the phones that you and I use today. This is obviously ridiculous. And Karya's goal is to change this forever. Karya, as many of you would know, is the Sanskrit word for work that gives you a sense of dignity. We believe that life has karya and akarya, work that gives to you and work that takes from you. And our goal is to bring dignified digital work to rural Indians, accelerating social mobility in every village in this country. So how do we do that? Every year, big tech companies like Microsoft, Google, and Tesla spend billions of dollars collecting training data for their AI models. Unfortunately, rural Indians today do not have access to this work. I want to walk you through an example. Let's say Microsoft wants to build a computational language model in Marathi. That's fancy way of saying, let's say they want to build their speech assistant in Marathi. To do that, they'll reach out to Karya and say, hey, I need 20,000 hours of data in Marathi. And when I say data, just speech data, like anyone speaking 20,000 hours of Marathi, so I can teach my computer what Marathi sounds like. We will take Microsoft's big digital task and break it into micro tasks. And we distribute these micro tasks to our workers in rural India by their smartphones. For the simple assignment of reading out sentences in their mother tongue, we pay our workers 20 times the Indian minimum wage. Workers like Reshma, thank you. Workers like Reshma. Reshma's community had no internet or electricity. In fact, this was the very first time using a smartphone. The first time Reshma saw the smartphone, she said, Iske andar Surya Dev hai, or the sun god inside this. Because it was the first time looking at a backlit display. My co-founder and I were a little hesitant on whether this would work. We didn't say anything, thankfully. 30 minutes later, Reshma came back to me and said, why did you think this would be difficult? All I have to do is read out sentences in my language. For this task, in the very first week, Reshma made 10,000 rupees, which was more than what her family had made all of last year. Our high-paying tasks enabled Reshma to become the first girl to leave her village. And today, she is studying to be a fashion designer in Mumbai. At Karya, we are reimagining how AI models are trained. This is a hundred billion dollar a year industry, and none of it is unfortunately ethical. We create worker-owned data sets, which means wherever possible, our workers own the data that they generate, and every single time that data is resold, they get paid 100% of the revenue all over again. The entire platform is peer-reviewed, and it is open source, which means any data company in the world can work with us, use our technology, and enable data workers in their communities to be moved out of poverty. And the platform works without internet. It doesn't require internet, it doesn't require electricity, and our latest platform doesn't even need a smartphone. So it's designed to be highly inclusive. Today, over 32,000 workers in 22 states across the country use Karya, and in the last two years, they've completed more than 35 million paid digital tasks on the platform. Thank you. That, in fact, is a very neat map of all the villages we work, which is really fun. And this incredible scale that we've achieved in the last two years is possible due to our incredible partners, some of which we named earlier. But of course, another shout out to the Gates Foundation, Google, Microsoft, so many people in the room today 
we remain eternally grateful. Millions of rural Indians have access to a smartphone, a bank account, and an internet connection. Most importantly, in India today, people are getting richer faster than the rate at which they're learning English, which means companies like Microsoft and Google are very interested in building models and products that serve people in their languages. Despite all these amazing things that have happened over the last 10 years with the digital revolution, rural India remains among the world's poorest areas. At Karya, our goal is to change this, to dramatically accelerate social mobility in rural India and use the AI revolution that we've all benefiting from to move our poorest people out of poverty. In fact, that is one of my favorite photos. That's uh, our team. And this was one of the very first uh, things that we ever did. People are very happy because this is right after demonetization. And they all got those pink 2,000 rupees note. And they were very excited to see what the notes looked like. So that was really fun. I started this presentation by talking to you about how it takes an average person seven generations to make that money. A Karya worker can make that same amount in less than a year. We're able to use technology to bridge that gap and get people out of poverty as quickly as possible. I always like ending my presentations with a voice from our community. This is Ramola Didi from Soda, and she says, I really like this kind of work because there's no physical pain or hard work involved. Because we are villagers, the work we get requires heavy lifting, but Karya matches my routine. I can do it anywhere. Plus, I'm teaching computers how to speak Marwari. Marwari is a great language, plus it's our language. If everyone is hearing my voice and it's helping spread my language, what can be better than this? What can be a bigger motivation than this? We were also recently on the cover of the Time magazine, which feels absurd and surreal. But we are very excited about the potential of using technology to bring the best of work from the world to the best of rural India. Our goal is, again, very ambitious, like Utsavs and like Nagmas and like Summits. The goal is to bring digital work to 100 million rural Indians by 2030 and put them on a pathway out of poverty. And we look forward to your support in making that happen.